Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm starting uh, about DSS. I'll do an overview and then a quick quick tour through the practical part of it. Then we will have captured one or two things. Uh, so if you have questions, just prepare them. Then at the end, I'll be able to respond to them. Okay. Ah, okay, so what is DSS? DSS is a uh, Dahua security software, uh, which is application based uh, and is the latest VMS that we are offering at the moment. Uh, uh, some of the key, key concepts are uh, easy to use. The user friendly design it has, it's easy to maintain. Uh, then we have Deep Explore, which gives you analytics. And also in terms of security, every aspect is secured with uh, some level of encryption. And also uh, you are required to put in a lot of password protection. In addition to that, DSS keeps logs of all operations. Any click you do on DSS, any operation you do on DSS, you can always retrieve that from logs. Uh, then DSS supports multi-server design. That is three plus two plus one. And if you know multi-server implementation, that means you can start small and then realize even up to, uh, let's say 20,000 uh, surveillance devices on one network, as long as you're applying the, the server architecture kind of implementation. And then we have the integrated and real-time monitoring. Uh, for this integrated and real-time monitoring, we have live view interface, uh, where we can look at the different views, we can set tours, pattern, patterns and such things. We can have presets for different views, then we just go through while using. Then again, DSS comes in two, two versions. DSS Express, which is free, pay as you go software. So you start free, it has free 64 video channels. So if you are working with small projects, then you can just use DSS Express, but it can only support up to 256 devices. But then we have DSS Professional. Uh, this one is commercial. Uh, it can support up to 2,000, uh, actually more than that if you are doing multi-server implementation. So uh, uh, it's a, it has all these functionalities and it's centralized, starting from video surveillance, uh, access control, video intercom, alarms, point of sale, if you are doing radar and any artificial intelligence features, uh, like face recognition and automatic number plate recognition, you can achieve that on DSS professional. Hello, you can hear me? Yes, yes, yes. when hear you. Ah, okay, great. Uh, then uh, we have DSS, uh, DSS Express and DSS Pro come as software. You have to install it in a server somewhere. But then again, we have two more. We have DSS 4004, which is DSS Express, which comes in a server version. This one has all licenses activated, but the, uh, all licenses activated, so up to 256 devices. So once you have, you have time, you can go to software.dahuasecurity.com and look at the different features DSS has. Uh, also, the diff you can just get a lot of in information on the same. Then we have DSS 7016, which is an, an a hardware version of DSS Professional. So it has licenses activated, and you can look at the different data sheets to see exactly which, which licenses are activated for, for your need. But again, if you need consult to do consultation, we, can always, we are always there to provide review on the same. Uh, so uh, that is the basic I will do for DSS, but then uh, my review will be on DSS, DSS so software, DSS professional to be specific. So I'll, I've told you about this, but then maybe we can look at some of the functionalities before, before I move, move ahead. So the first one, uh, for DSS Express, we we'll look at uh, these functionalities. It starts with free 64 video licenses, but then you can upgrade up to 250 
56 video channels and it's only single site so we can't achieve multi-site uh implementation but then we have easy upgrades so if you are using dss express and you, your requirements change then we can always purchase licenses that can convert it to dss pro uh, we have that uh, then this is the simple implementation of dss so we'll have dss express server somewhere on the network then we connect the end devices uh, then the client can be connected dss app and also these devices DSS can control the video through a network video decoder. Uh, then uh, some of the uh, benefits you get is it's low investment, uh, free 64 video channels. Then once you start to subscribe, you pay as you go with the license can easily be scaled. Then you can easily upgrade. We have there. Yes, it's just a simple license switch. Then we have it as a unified platform which integrates application like video access control, video intercom, face recognition, and PR and DSS Express can give you that one, that single platform. Uh, then the next thing we have is DSS professional, which is the, the main surveillance. It has uh, this kind of implementation. So you can do multi-site, multiple sites. You can do hot standby. So the main server and the standby server, you can even implement M plus one, the multi-server architecture, so that you achieve the largest surveillance you have. But then uh, still the concept behind the operation is still DSS client and then DSS app. And then also we have like, you can have multiple DSS pro servers connected and then through a video, we'll just do live view and also client probably for playback and reviewing and also checking logs. Uh, then if we look at some functionalities, it's highly scalable, scalable can easily be expanded up to 20,000 ch channels and two petabyte storage capacity. So that means uh, through the multi-server implementation, this N plus M redundancy, uh, we can have 20,000 channels for, for the start, but then uh, we can expand this up to two petabyte. Uh, for storage. So if we have network attached storage, we have EVS for our case, then you can expand DSS storage with that up to two petabyte. Uh, then high availability where you can set a DSS main server and DSS sub server. If the main server fails, the sub server keeps running. Then we have Deep Explore, which is an AI based. Uh, I can develop like a track. If I have surveillance installed in an area, I can use the different cameras in that area to track the movement of someone and even generate a path and logs for that person. And then this version of DSS is customizable. That means uh, if you choose to do integrations later on, you can use DSS Pro to for that. Though we'll provide API for that if you are doing the development on your site, maybe integrating with other systems. But then if you need us to, to change something specific to meet your business needs, then uh, we can charge you some small fee for, for that case, then there's customization, which goes on. Then we have DSS 404, which I told you is the hardware version of DSS Express. Uh, if you look at this, it's all in one. So no need to purchase licenses. Once you purchase this server, it's all done. Uh, but let's look at the benefits. Uh, cost effective, one-time payment for hardware and whole software capacity, and also the price per channel is low if you are purchasing one of. Then uh, these are the support it has, 256 cameras maximum, 64 doors maximum, 1,000 video intercoms, and it supports maximum of 100 TB storage capacity per server. So 14004, you can only do a maximum of 100 terabytes. And then the reliability is stable and reliable. Uh, it runs on the Linux operating systems. I think if you know about operating systems, you know the benefits in terms of security Linux has over other operating systems. Uh, then we have DSS 7016. Uh, which is now bigger, it is the DSS Pro. This one, uh, it has uh, 5,000 video channels, 15 built-in storage disks interface. So itself, it has like, you can have 15 extra hard disks installed in the server, then up to petra one petabyte center storage, if you're implementing the network storage, then you can also run it on distribution. Uh, looking at the functionalities again, still plug and play all in one, Powerful, it can do a thousand video channels per server, 5,000 
video channels via distributed deployment. So the maximum for this is 5,000 video channels and then up to 2,000 video intercoms per server. And then uh, if you look at performance, uh, it's 15 built-in storage disk interface and 200 terabyte per server, maximum one petabyte through distributed deployment. And look at the bandwidth, 600 MBP. Then we have uh, it being still stable and reliable and with the unique N, N plus M redundancy mode, then we can achieve hot standby, which helps us uh, stay on track. Then uh, the next thing, uh, if you compare this, you realize that this CF 7016 is still limited. The maximum you can do is 5,000 per implementation for video channels. But DSS professional software, it can go up to 20,000. So based on the project you're doing, uh, you can decide which exactly you're going to, to do. Then uh, I think that will be all for the brief introduction of DSS. Then I will show you how to get it. So to get DSS, usually at the bottom here, we have download. You can also download the comparison sheet and check the different functionalities for different models of DSS. But then if you want to download, just click download. You can download DSS Professional 8.1, uh, then try, try it out. So you have just download, you can download the user manual, try it out, uh, quick deployment, release notes, everything, all information you need on DSS. But again, if you have any questions, we have that chat, you can just uh, get in touch and ask. Uh, so I already have it downloaded. So I'll just switch to that. I'll switch to that. So I'll start presenting from this point. Uh, I'll switch into a server so that I show you exactly what I'm talking about on uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see. Ah, great. Okay, so uh, let me log into this remote computer in our server room. Uh, we have this, we have these two, DSS client and DSS professional server. So uh, it, DSS runs on the client server architecture. That means in the server, we'll install DSS professional server, uh, which will provision all services. So I'll just open this server. uh right here this is how the server looks like it has different services that are always running so based on the in application you, you are using you need to know which service uh, is running and uh, you have to make sure actually i recommend all services need to be running when you are running the dss deployment but then again uh, you can configure uh, for single network card dual network card if your server supports multiple ne network card. Then if you want it to be uh, available remotely, maybe on the internet, you can put a public IP address here or a domain name, then it can still be accessed remotely. So that's the most important part. Then the last thing you need to know is how to get the client because you won't find on that download center, you won't find DSS client to download. But uh, if we check, once you install the DSS server, at the bottom here, we have DSS client. So if you click on that, it will take you to a link where you can download the client. Uh, it does not have a web interface. Uh, it's giving me a security threat here, but uh, it's just a simple a simple download. So the certificate is invalid. Maybe I'll renew it later, later on. Uh, okay, so DSS client, uh, you can download here, then again install on your computer. Once you have the client installed, you will have to run the client. So. Uh, I will switch again back to my computer where I have download, already downloaded the client. Uh, give me a second.
Hello? Hello, are you still following? Okay. Hello. Yes. yes. Ah, great. Okay, I'll proceed. Uh, you can see my DSS client. Yes. Okay, uh, I will log into DSS client. Okay, is it clear now? Yes, please. Okay, okay. So from DSS client, this is how the client looks like once you have the different licenses activated. We have the, the home tab, but every time you need to do an operation, you'll work on a new tab at any given time. Then you'll have an overview of the devices on the network. Like right now, I have 17 total devices. 16 are online, one is offline. Then we have the different events if you have configured any. Then we have uh, these configurations. Uh, so we'll have basic configuration, uh, user configuration, device configuration, and storage configuration. Then we'll have storage plan. Hello. Hello? Uh, can you please mute the last one? I can't hear you. Well. Is the person is the participate? Hello. Hello. Hmm? Sorry. Okay. Hello. Continue. Continue. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, you can turn turn off the microphone from your end so that we reduce the background noise. Okay. Uh, okay, so DSS client looks like this. Uh, I mentioned about the overview. We have the management center. Then we have uh, at the home screen again, we have monitoring center, we have event center, we have deep explore, we have access management, parking lot, intelligent analysis, and maintenance center. I'll just do an overview of each of that then maybe you'll go try it out. Uh, once you've seen how it works, then you can come back and add, and maybe do a review of the areas that are vague. So from the monitoring center, is where I'm doing the live view, watching different videos. We have the event center. If I've got, I'm doing alarm configurations and everything, I can use this to check which zone has been triggered, what and what have you. Then you have Deep Explore. Deep Explore is a module where you can do advanced AI search. Then access management, if I'm doing access control, I'll use that to manage. Then we have parking lot, where I can configure entrance and exit, parking and everything. Then we have intelligent analysis. Hello, kindly mute your microphone. I'm trying to reach one of the participants. Eh? Okay, I, I will proceed. Uh, now, uh, from home screen, we have the settings screen. I uh, just click this icon that looks like a range. Then we have these configurations, device configuration, user configurations, and storage configurations. Then after that, this is the basic configuration. We have some advanced configuration, which is specific, like storage plan where I configure the recording plan for the different uh, video recording devices. Then events where I configure different events like alarm and everything. Then we have map where I can configure the locations of the different devices 
uh, I'm using. Then you can have person and vehicle information. So this is a database for if I'm doing face recognition, uh, vehicle detection, recognition and such, number plate recognition actually. Uh, use that. Then we have watch list where you can set a database of people I'm watching. Maybe uh, if they cross a line or get into my premise, I trigger an alarm. Then access configuration. We have video intercom configuration. Attendance configuration. Uh, if you're doing time and attendance. Then visitor uh, management. Uh, then we have parking lot and also intelligent analysis. Then after that, we have system configurations. Uh, which starts with the deployment, you can configure the licenses. So remember, for all these modules to be activated, we must have that license for that case. Then you have system parameters to check about the system. Then you have backup where I can backup my configurations at the moment and maybe import them in case of have a failure. Then you have synthesis where we check the different uh, performance of the server. So I'll just click this license so that you look at the license. Uh, we have like right now i have dss professional version 8.1 uh, which can be activated online or offline so that procedure again uh, we don't need to go through it now but we can review it later later on uh, here we have uh, the different licenses like video channel licenses uh, we have like for right now we have a news 937 i mean we had a thousand access control devices uh, lift control point of sale channels, uh, video intercom, alarm controller, emergency devices, walkthrough metal detectors, security screening machine, if you have radar, uh, then DSS Agile VDP user, that's a mobile application, so we can have a thousand users, then parking space for a thousand parking, uh, 1,500 parking spaces, then LED screens, that's for parking display, then we have bridges, and cascade subsites. We have these add-ons. These are modules. So they are purchased only one per deployment. So the parking lot module, attendance module, multi-site module, independent database, and group talk. So it depends on the requirement you have. Again, you realize it opened a tab here. So for every module, you always get to open a tab. Now, how do I add a device to DSS? I just come to, from settings, basic configuration and such, device. I'll be able to see the list of devices available. Then I can just select if it's uh, a camera, maybe this one, I select and add. If it's an NVR, like I'll try to add this NVR, I just select, then say add to device list. That the option would be, I just click here on the right, then click add to platform. I select which organization like this one, I'll add to our showroom and then put in the username and password and then add it. It will just do a, pro a process and then add it to, to the devices we have. Uh, the other way I can add a device is just click add here and then type in the IP address or I can use IP segment, I can use uh, domain name, uh, the NVR is added and we have a prompt here. It was added successfully. Uh, we can use uh, auto registration. We can use P2P. That is when we are using the serial numbers. And then for P2P, you can only use cameras and NVR. Then we have like, if I do IP ad by IP address, I can add all devices using that. But then we can have things like IP segment where I can only add uh, encoders, that's cameras and uh, NVR and also emergency devices. Then we have a uh, domain name. We can add these devices with domain name. We can add with auto-registration. Uh, so it's these devices again, encoder, alarm controller, NPR cameras, access control, video intercom, and emergency devices. But then we have different access platforms. Uh, we have like Dahua. We can also add on with devices, then Gzood, platform we are usually we use this for our uh, our leds and then we have uh you, you select the organization and also if you have multi-site multi-server implementation you'll have multiple servers which you can add to once you add a device you go to device configuration you select that device for example is this camera 
I'll select that. I can configure my AI rule at this point. Uh, just click AI rule configuration. Then I can access that camera. It will give me a pop-up which I can use to configure things like uh, tripwire, um, intrusion, abandoned object, object miss, missing. That's the like complete functionality of IVS. Uh, so I can have that but I won't go into that. I can configure event for this specific channel. That is, uh, for example, if someone crosses a line or gets in, it does motion detection, then it can do a pop-up. Uh, for this case, let me just do maybe motion detection. I say motion detection, and then I decide that they are on the attribute, the priority should be high, medium or low. Then the time template, we can select maybe only on weekdays, weekend. You can also create your own time, time template. So I'll use all period. Then I'll have to link an action. Uh, what I'll do is do a link, link with a video. I'll use the event source. You can also use another camera. Uh, then uh, I say when alarm is triggered, display camera live view on client and also display which stream. It could be the mainstream, the substream or such. Then I can also set it to record, uh, but I won't set that. And then we have all these other attributes that you can use. Then if you have alarm devices, you can set uh, alarm protocol and also upload that. Then you decide which user to, to access. So I'll just put this pop-up for administrator and super administrator, and then I wait for it to be triggered. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Okay. So once we'll have motion, that pop-up will just come up. Then uh, we you, like this is the pop-up because we have motion. Yeah, it will say like alarm has been triggered. And then uh, I can just choose not to show this pop-up again. Then uh, at the top here, we will always take us to event center where we'll see the different events. Then we can work on them. I do an operation. I mark processed. I processed. Uh, so, so once you've reviewed an event, you process. You process. Then I'll go back again to device configuration. I'll mute this also. I'll go back. Uh, okay, I will close this and also this. I'll talk about user. So I've shown you how to add users and how to do some basic configuration for that case. Then I'll go to users. I'll click. I can create roles. So I can just create maybe manager role. Manager role. And I can copy from a specified role if I had already created. I can say the manager can only access these camera devices or this device, these specific devices. And then uh, what can the manager do? Configure recording, uh, lock recording, do PTZ control. And then uh, for the menu, which, which menu can they get? Uh, I can give them access to logs. Then I can also give them maybe probably a storage plan and event configuration. And then I also do maybe uh, they can access the monitoring center. So you restrict which exact parts of DSS they can access, then you create that role. So once I have the manager role set up, I can go to and add a user. So I just click user management and click add, add a user. I say, for example, me, uh, like that. I can allow him to log in using multiple clients or only one client, then create uh, a password. And confirm the password. I can allow them to access the MPT devices. So if they have an MPT, uh, this way I create them. Uh, enable forced password change as fast login. So the moment they log in for the first time with the default password, I can force them to change that password so that they use their own custom password. Then enable password change interval, probably 90 days, that is every three months. I can do annual password change. So you can set such restrictions. Then uh, I can also enable password expiry time. So once I've created this password, probably say after one week, 
it will expire so that they have to request again. Then PTZ control permissions, I can give them. I can add their email addresses if I have. Then I can also bind MAC address. This is a security feature and then I add a MAC address for that case so that no one else can log in. Then I give them the, the, the specific permissions, uh, which role are they accessing? So I just give them manager and then use that. And then say, okay. So I have this user who is manager and is a normal user. Uh, so if I switch, I can log in and access those specific modules, though I want to do that. Maybe you can do the test deployment. And then once you have that, uh, you can see how it works. Then uh, again, I go to storage. Storage here, you can configure the storage. You can add network disks. You can add, uh, configure the server disks. So how many hard disks you have, and then you configure. You can configure either as video or images and file. Right now, uh, and other files actually in 8.1, and then we have incident files. So you can configure that. Uh, from the server. And then you can also create a disk group so that this group of disks stores what specific channels and such. And then you have device storage configuration. So you can select the different, dev different devices, then you configure the storage. So for example, if a camera has an SD card, you can configure the storage, uh, like su such things. But I won't go so much into that, but you can do that on DSS. So it, it provides you the total management for, for, for your surveillance. Okay, then uh, once we have storage, we'll look at application configuration. Uh, under application configuration, we have the storage plan. Uh, I suggest we take a five minutes break, then we proceed. Is that okay? Uh, if it's okay, I'll just take five minutes break, then okay. get back. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> 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 